So won't you please welcome the president of the John Birch Society, John McMahon. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> well, thank you very much for that, uh, what do you say, Middle Atlantic State welcome? Yeah, very good. Uh, appreciate being here in New Jersey. I don't know how many of you know, I was born and raised in Brooklyn. My family lived in Summit, New Jersey for a couple of years. <clears throat> then they went down to Virginia. You know. And I've, I've been living up in Massachusetts for a long, long time. Like, like Hid Welch, we always tell everybody we like to work behind enemy lines. Right? <laughs> yeah. Now, you've, you've seen that the, the title of my speech is Stop Apologizing, right? And I'm going to get to that, right? But I'll get to Stop Apologizing. The first thing I want to do, however, I want to mention eight points eight points that are reminders of what is happening in the land of the free and the home of the brave. And as I mention these eight points, ask yourself if what I am about to relate is stupidity or ignorance or design. Number one, we have an admitted national debt exceeding $9 trillion. That's nine and 12 zeros. Congress has just acknowledged awareness of this monstrous burden in a rather offhanded way. They raised the national debt ceiling to $10.2 trillion, which means it's only a matter of time before that plateau is reached. If we add unfunded obligations into the future for which there's no money in the government's till, the debt already exceeds $50 trillion. They should change that slogan, no child left behind, to the debt, not the school system, right? <laughs> Yet the brilliant creatures running our government continue a foreign aid program. And they shovel money to virtually every nation on earth. President Bush recently visited Africa. Here's the result. $307 million for Benin. 698 for billion, million for Tanzania. $100 million for Rwanda. 547 million for Ghana and uncounted millions for Liberia, and on and on it goes. Is this stupidity or ignorance or design? Number two, geologists confirm there are huge deposits of oil and natural gas just offshore our coasts and in uninhabited by humans portions of Alaska. Yet these resources remain untapped while our nation becomes increasingly dependent for life-giving energy on foreign sources that hate us, but like our money. Right? Point number three, the U.S. Constitution says that Congress alone can send a nation into war, yet we are now in the fourth major conflict since 1950 without any declaration of war. Instead, our leaders have told us that our men, and now even our women, must fight and die to enforce United Nations resolutions. Stupidity, ignorance, or design. Number four, the Constitution states very clearly in its first article that all legislative powers shall be vested in Congress of the United States. Yet the president issues executive orders that have become law, and the Supreme Court hands down rulings that we are all told are the law of the land. Whatever happened to the meaning of the word all? The Constitution tells us that all lawmaking power resides in Congress, and we have to ask ourselves, why does Congress continue to allow this gross infringement on its powers? Number five, now we're going to have eight of these, so here we go. There are at least 20 million illegal immigrants living in our nation. Many receive welfare, medical care, and other benefits at taxpayer expense. We are told repeatedly that the administration in power is doing everything it can to fix the problem. But the problem continues and worsens. Number six, the federal government has gained almost complete control of the nation's primary and secondary schools, as well as a significant amount of control over colleges and universities. The cost of all this educational institution uh, invasion has skyrocketed, and the quality of the schools has simultaneously plummeted. 
Concerned parents continue trying to stop the introduction of morally offensive instruction, even at grade school level. And many moms and dads beg for honest history courses to be taught in, in the high schools of this country. But frustrated Americans don't seem to realize that the government is never going to sanction teaching anything in the government schools that will cut into government's power or overturn its agenda. The educational slide continues and worsens in spite of the Herculean efforts of some teachers in some of these schools. Now, is this stupidity or ignorance or, or design? Number seven, the value of the dollar is sinking. And the government's response is to have the Federal Reserve bail out banks and other institutions with freshly issued money. The new money, of course, lowers the dollar's value even as more, even more as anyone who visits a supermarket or a gasoline pump has discovered. It takes more of the less valuable dollars to purchase anything. As recession impacts the nation, the government has decided to send every taxpayer a rebate check. Are you ready? Okay. Now, to do so, they will either borrow the money or print it. If they borrow it, they'll borrow it from China. And this will either add to the national debt or further lower the value of the dollar, or both. And many of those who receive the checks will rush out and buy goods made in China. And China benefits in several ways, but the American dollar does not. Okay, number eight. Without openly admitting it, our leaders are relying on authorization included in the 1993 NAFTA Pact to steer America into a sovereignty-compromising North American Union. Not only that, they have already begun planning to shove Canada, Mexico, and the United States into an alliance with the European Union that has already destroyed the independence of 27 nations in Europe. Gone will be our Declaration of Independence, our government-limiting U.S. Constitution, our precious Bill of Rights. That's eight. Now, as you may assume, I could go on, right? I could probably go to 80, but I won't. Instead, I'll pose a few questions. Do you believe that those who are responsible for what I have just chronicled are stupid and that they're doing their very best but blundering over and over again? No. All right, next question. Do you believe that those who are responsible for what I have just alluded to are unaware of the harm they are doing? Are they ignorant? No. Well, the third question is, do you believe that our leaders have intelligence enough to know that what they are doing and are therefore operating according to some plan? Yes. yes. You all get an A. Well, the final question is, do you want to see a reversal in all of this? And the answer, of course, is yes. Okay, let's work on reversing the problems we've just discussed. We first have to acknowledge the fact that the vast majority of fellow Americans aren't pleased with the way the ship of state is being steered. Even the New York Times says 81% of the American public is not happy with the way our country is being directed. It's not difficult at all to find a fellow American who's concerned about what is happening, and I'm not the least bit reluctant to assume that every person in this room knows others who are upset because government is meddling in our lives, because taxes are too high, because the media isn't telling the whole story, because we shouldn't be policing the world, because illegal immigration isn't being stopped, and because the, the cost of everything is ballooning. So every one of us has allies who can be made into activists if we can get over a couple of significant hurdles. The first step we must take is recognition of what we must fight against. In other words, identify the enemy. Is our enemy a set of ideas or is it a group of persons? If it's ideas, proposing better ideas should win the day. All we have to do to combat bad ideas is to have a debate, and we'll win the day with our better ideas. But proposing better ideas and debating the proponents of bad ideas doesn't work. In fact, I believe debating some of the nation's leaders about what they are doing supplies them with a legitimacy they don't deserve. 
In a debate, all points of view are awarded respect and stature. So I don't debate. If, on the other hand, the enemy is those persons who create the harmful policies, then this is a whole new ballgame, isn't it? They have to be identified and their harmful policies made obvious. And once we start doing that, something kicks in, and it's called self-preservation. The instinct in every human being known as self-preservation has not been destroyed. After we have identified the enemy as persons and not just bad ideas, we have to decide whether the harm being done to our country and ourselves results from deliberate decision-making, abject ignorance, or incredible stupidity. And you've already answered the question. When you hear someone grousing about the cost of filling up the gas tank in the car or the misuse of our military or the newest foreign aid giveaway or the loss of jobs to foreigners, or ask simply, is this happening as the result of stupidity? Or you could say, don't you think the persons responsible for the harm you see also see the harm that you see? Do you think they're stupid? In other words, shift the emphasis from ideas to persons. We're not up against flawed ideas as much we are, as we are against flawed persons. And yes, it's true that a sizable number of the persons implementing the flawed policies aren't the generators of those bad policies. They are morally deficient individuals who go along with the harmful policies for nice salaries, prestigious honors, government posts, favorable press treatment, treatment, and so on. They didn't dream up the harmful policies. They simply go along to promote self. But there are others who do generate the bad policies. And the way to begin to combat them and all the morally deficient implementers of those bad policies is to start asking the simple question of upset Americans that you run into all the time. The question is, do you think these people who are responsible for what bothers you are stupid? What I'm leading up to is the need for awareness of design. What we face is not stupidity. It is not ignorance. We face deliberate treachery. It is this awareness that has to be conveyed, and it is about this that we must stop apologizing. Now, you all know Americans who don't like illegal immigration, foreign aid, undeclared and ending, unending wars, shrinking value of the dollar. Are the persons responsible for this stupid? Of course not. David Rockefeller isn't stupid. Neither is Henry Kissinger, or Dick Cheney, Robert Pastor, Richard N. Gardner, and many others. They're not stupid. In the early days of the 20th century, a group of men who wanted to rule the world formed an organization called the Council on Foreign Relations. They were terribly disappointed because the U.S. Senate had said no to the League of Nations. So they formed an organization to promote their goal. They knew what they were doing, and they knew that if they were successful, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution would be canceled. The modern leaders of this extremely potent group include Rockefeller, Kissinger, Cheney, Robert Pastor, Richard N. Gott, many more. You can name a lot of them. I'm sure you can. When the CFR's magazine called for an end run around national sovereignty, eroding it piece by piece, none of them resigned. None of them protested even. These people aren't stupid. Nor are the people who run the Ford Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Carnegie Endowment, and, and many other money pits that fund and promote the CFR, the illegal immigration revolution the plan to deliver our nation to a North American Union and various other causes that are undermining the American dream. The persons who are determined to cancel U.S. independence on the way to world government controlled by them aren't stupid. The harm being done is being accomplished by people who know it's harmful, which is why they do it. Ask almost anyone if stupidity is the reason for an array of problems and be prepared to be accused of harboring a conspiracy theory. Right? What's your response to that? You bet your life it's a conspiracy, and it's not a theory, it's a fact. Right? 
What's a conspiracy? Three elements in every conspiracy. More than one person, secrecy, evil. That's it. Why, you should ask, haven't our leaders closed the borders? Why haven't they been forthright about their plans for the North American Union? Why is the oil in Alaska's wilderness still in the ground? Why is our nation still in NAFTA? Why is the dollar's value pl fading daily? There's plenty of secrecy involved in hiding the ultimate effect of these policies, and there's more than one person promoting them. And I don't believe I have to dwell on the evil involved. What does this add up to? It adds up to conspiracy, doesn't it? Okay. So let's stop apologizing for adding two plus two and getting four. <laughs> Let's stop apologizing for believing that some persons have evil goals. Let's stop apologizing for naming names and for pointing out that many more are guilty of going along to get along while the ship of state is being steered into the rocks that will destroy it. But don't, ex don't start your exchange with another American by using the word conspiracy. Just ask if what he is bothered about is the result of stupidity. If everyone in this audience and in many other audiences will simply start asking if the harm being done is the result of mere stupidity, the battle is half won. In many cases, you won't even have to use the word conspiracy. It will begin to dawn on anyone who isn't willing to accept slavery in a world government. It will become obvious to all who have any red, white, and blue left in them that what is happening is the result of deliberate treachery. And then they might say, well, what do we do about it? And you know the answer. It's called J.B.S. <laughs> <clears throat> Ultimately, you should stop apologizing for wanting to be free. You should stop apologizing for pointing out deliberate treachery. You should stop apologizing for wanting to live in the country formed by the brave and far-seeing individuals who risked all to establish these United States. Stop apologizing for wanting to pass on this land of the free to your children, your grandchildren, and generations yet to come. If we stop apologizing, we'll start winning. And I expect that everyone here wants to win. So keep praying, keep working, stop apologizing. Remember, we're not fighting ideas, we're fighting persons. And these persons aren't stupid, they aren't ignorant. There's a design, and it's a conspiracy. And if we all proceed in this fashion, the victory we seek will come sooner than we could even imagine. Thank you very much.